Hi, Shalom, everyone. I'm going to continue the series of the great rabbis of yesteryear. Now, we've actually covered nearly 500 videos of 500 great rabbis here in this great series. We've already spoken about Rabbi Mordechai Shirabi two years ago when it was his uh, yard site. And here we are once again. We are concentrating video on the great Chacham. Now, it's interesting. He was actually born in the English year 1912 and he passed away in the English year 1983, to be precise, on the... 27th of October, we're talking about 41 years ago, on Chaf Cheshvan, the 20th of Cheshvan. So this week was his yard site, his Hilula. He was a great Kabbalist, what well, great rabbi from uh, Teman origin, from Yemen. He was a founder of the famous yeshiva, Mukabalim, great Kabbalist yeshiva of Nahar Shalom in Jerusalem. That's the place where we have visited on this channel on various occasions. It was nicknamed the Zakena Mukabalim and the Barosh Adat Mechabanim, a really, really great rabbi. And uh, he was also naturally the Rosh Yeshiva of this uh, great place in of himself. He, was, he lived about 71 years approximately let's explore some of the highlights of the great rabbi's life so he was born in english year of 1912 in teman in yemen over there very interesting he was his father i believe was a great rabbi rabbi yehuda but i think he was actually he sadly passed away just before rabbi mordechai shirabi was born and uh i think sadly also when he was age of two his mother rabbi miriam passed away so he grew up in the house of his grandfather, the father of his father, Harab Avram Yafet Ta'izi, really great rabbi, and learned a great amount of Torah inside uh, uh, under his auspices. After his grandfather passed away, I think it was very close to Rabbi Chaim Sinuani, who happened to be one of the great uh, Kabbalists. He was a Diane, a Jewish a judge. He was head of a Jewish court in, I believe, the Sharab area in uh, and in Sino An in Teman, respectively. These were places which had great Torah communities. So, uh, and uh, he would later on become, get a prominent position inside the Rabbanut in of itself. He learned, I believe, in the famous yeshiva called the Mishumar and Nasim, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he, he, this was of the yeshiva of Harab, Mishumar and Nasim. This was his yeshiva in himself. That's where he learned. He happened to be a great Kabbalist, I think, in Aden also, and naturally is famous also for being the rabbi of Rabbi Mordechai Shrabi. When he was 15 years of age, he was astounding in Gomorrah. They say that he passed a very difficult test within regards to the Talmud Babli, the Gomorrah, the Rambam, a Tor, a Shulchan Aruch, also the Code of Jewish Law. Then when it came to the English in 1932, we're talking about he was 20 years of age, he made Aliyah to the land of Israel, and he would actually dwell in Jerusalem over there. And there he would actually learn in the yeshiva, yeshiva Sha'ar Tzion, which happened to be a great yeshiva in Jerusalem. I think this was very much connected to the Harav Ben Tzion Mea Chai Uziel, very great uh, institution, Torah place in of itself, which I, maybe we will cover a video on that uh, at one stage in time. Naturally, Rabbi, Rabbi Ben Tzion Mea Chai Uziel was actually Rishon Litzion of Israel, which we've mentioned about on various occasions before. Then he was appointed to become the rabbis of the famous yeshiva, Mukubalim, Yeshiva Tbet El, another place we've spoken about before. And later on, he would actually found the yeshiva, Nahar Shalom. I think uh, actually uh, uh, named after the great Kabbalist Rabbi Shalom Sharabi, also a great Yemenite rabbi. And this was a place where they learned Kabbalah at a high level, great amount of Torah, one of the highest places of Torah uh, possible to actually uh, learn in, in of itself. And uh, very, very much... Uh, very, very, very great institution. It's actually say he was absolutely wondrous when it came to like performing Nisim in of itself, uh, Moftim, everything else, uh, wonders in of itself. Many people come to him for advice and for brachot, for blessings, respectively. And he was a rabbi of the, uh, let's just say, in of itself, of the tzibor, of the congregation himself. He took, uh, treated everyone's needs properly over there and really, really taught and uh a huge, huge amount of Torah. I believe his wife passed away, Rabbanit Leah, in the English year 1979. That would have been about four years before he, the great Kacham, the great Rabbi, passed away. 
And uh, I think sa sadly they didn't have any biological children, but I, I related in the first video, which we did two years ago on his Hilula, that uh, he had like t tens and tens of thousands of great Talmudim that are like his children. And the amount of Torah that uh, is being learned in every single day from him is absolutely phenomenal. He was one of the greatest rabbis, for sure, from Yemen and possibly in Jewish history in of itself, one of the great rabbis in of itself. He, I believe in his last few years, he was quite weak. So uh, many of his Talmidim, his students would bring him, take him to different places, but uh, he, which we've actually uh, mentioned, I think, in a previous video, if I'm not mistaken, more can actually be related within the great rabbi also. They actually say that uh, among his students, including Rabbi Meir Yehuda Getz, he was happened to be a great rabbi. Also, Rab Chaim Avihu Schwartz, who I think was a ram in Yeshivat Merkaz Arav and in Yeshivat Bet. I don't know again. Rab Tzion Bracha, Rab Moshe Tzuriel, Rabbi Shalom Shmueli, who I think was uh, one of the great Kabbalists of Israel. I think he's actually related somehow to me very distantly. And uh, obviously famous being a Talmud of Rabbi Mordechai Shrabi. Rabbi Benyahu Shmueli, who is currently the Rosh Yeshiva of Yeshivat Nahar Shalom now. I, I can celebrate uh, that I am distantly related to Rabbi Benyahu Shmueli, which is very interesting. This is what uh, I heard recently. He's a Rosh Yeshiva of Yeshivat Nahar Shalom based in Nachla Ot. And uh, I would very much, much recommend if anyone's visiting Jerusalem to actually visit there. It's a great place in of itself. And uh, we can relate even more uh, within regards. So if you watch over the previous video, they uh, in those specific videos, I actually related three uh, stories within regards to the great rabbi. And they say that many great Kabbalists will actually come and ask him questions, including, I think, the head of the Yeshivat Betel, Rabbi Dayan Ovadia Hodaya, the great Dayan, Rabbi Ovadia Hodaya, Rabbi Chacham Ovadia Yosef also. Uh, very interesting enough, he happens to be a chief rabbi, I think, of Israel between the years 1973 to 1983. They say that he only slept, I think, per night, 20 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. He made sure to dip in the mikveh every single morning. He wore two pairs of tefillin. Uh, according to Rashi and Rabin Tam, that's another interesting thought. And uh, really, really was praying a huge amount. One of the great rabbis, for sure, of the 1900s of the land of Israel and from uh, Yemen. He was buried in Haram and Uchot Cemetery in Jerusalem. Uh, and uh, I think there's various different institutions that are named after his memory. Many, many different things, including just, for example, a Beit Midrash in Hatzliya called Yeshivat Chazon Mordechai, Yeshivat Sharei Mordechai in Jerusalem, and the Mostot. Uh, there's a Mostot Foundation after him in Batyam, to name a few. There was uh, other, uh, I believe, places that are named after him. So it's actually interesting just to add on a few uh, more things within regards to the great, great, great rabbi. Many, many of the great rabbis, I think they say that... Uh, one of his students said, I think, uh, <clears throat> that he answered the way of Rabbi Avram Yitzchak Cohen Cook uh, compared to, to uh, Rabbi Yosef Chaim Sonnenfeld. He was uh, c c saying about the differences between the great rabbis. Approach. That was the beauty about Rabbi Shrabi. He was close to everyone. He he looked, he could connect to many of the great rabbis of Israel, whatever path, let's just say, uh, or Hashkafa they actually took. He was and considered by many as one of the greatest rabbis of all time. So much more to learn about him. I recommend everyone to visit Nakhla Ot neighborhood to actually uh, see the actual yeshiva in of itself. I visited there. It's a phenomenal yeshiva, Yeshiva Nahar Shalom. He passed away in English in 1983, 41 years ago. Now, just to go back to it, uh, among his uh, rabbis include Rabbi Avram Yafet Ta'izi, Rabbi Chaim Sinoani, Rabbi Meshumar Nisim, and Rabbi Mordechai Atia. The latter, Rabbi Mordechai Atia, also being a great rabbi and a great Talmud Chacham and a great Kabbalist in of itself. I think we actually did a video on that great Chacham. And uh, he would become, I think, the rabbi of Mexico City, even. That's another interesting uh, side. Uh, bit. And what's interesting, a lot of his students was a mixture, many Sephardi students and Ashkenazi students including Rabbi Shlomo Fisher, also Rabbi Mordechai Fisher, who we mentioned about, Rabbi Chaim Avihu Schwartz, and uh, Rabbi Yisra Dav 